take a nap. Mind me to nap too, June. Move your doll over. This is my tree, Polly. You go and find your own tree. Use that one over. Was a man, a brave man, whose heart was filled with love. Both strength and might were in his hand, so gentle as a dove. He wore no gun upon his hip, his body to protect. His armor was the word of God, and so he stood erect. The persuader, the persuader, and everybody knew the persuader, the persuader, the words he spoke were true. Hey, kid. Come here. You're Mark Bonham's son. What about it? I hear your old man's been complaining about losing a few head of cattle. A few head? Rick Justin don't take kindly to being called a thief. He decides to make it personal. Your old man will find himself in real trouble. You mean swinging from a tree like Doc Landis? This is Vic Justin's town, boy. Don't you forget it. Tell the old man to keep his mouth shut. That's all. Hey, kid! You forgot your hat? Hello, Toby. Cora's in the back. I keep telling Daddy can't see beyond the end of his nose. What are you doing in town? No, I came by to get some things from Ma. Thought I'd say hello. You uh, hear about Doc Landis, Mr. Nicklin? Yeah, I heard. They say his kids found him hanging from a tree. That's an awful thing. What are we going to do about it? Nothing. Everybody knows Vic Justin was behind it. Not so loud, son. In this town, we think one way and live another. That's what Doc Landis forgot. What we need is a sheriff that'll stand up against Justin. The last one tried it's buried up on Boot Hill. You want to join him? I can't figure it. Everybody talks about law and order, but nobody does anything about it. Seems like the only thing around here that pays off is breaking the law. Toby, you don't mean that. Here's a letter for your dad, Toby. From Atlanta, Georgia. I reckon it's from that preacher brother of his. Dad, you're paid to handle the mail, not read it. Thanks, Mr. Nicholas. 
Now, about that list of groceries for Ma. I'll have him in a jiffy, Toby. Don't eat so fast, Paul. What does Matt have to say, dear? No, he says he's coming out here to the territory. Be here in a week or ten days. Uncle Matt's coming here? He's giving up his city church because he thinks he can do more good here. I wish that were true. Oh, Mark, we need men like Matt. Need them desperately. It's not just a preacher we need, Catherine. It's people who will listen to one. But we've had no leadership, no spiritual guidance. That's why people have lost their courage. We had a church, remember? Till Justin burned it down. Nobody's proved that. Nobody's proved anything about him. Uh, Dad, uh, I saw a couple of his men in town today. He said you'd be in real trouble if you didn't stop stirring up the town. I'm going to do more than stir it up. When people can't get the law to work for them, they have to take it into their own hands. I'm going to get the decent men of this town banded together, and we're going to drive Justin out of the territory for good. Oh, Mark, that's just what Doc Landis was trying to do. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to finish the job for it. We have no choice, Catherine. If the territory is ever going to grow or amount to anything, we've got to drive out men like Justin and everything that they stand for. Finish your supper, Paul. I tell you, Dan, if a few of us don't join together against these men, we'll all be wiped out. I... I guess it's a case of who goes first, Mark. I can't say I relish the job. I can't count on you, then. Just don't ask me to be first in line. All right, Dan. Oh, why don't you talk to Morris Fowler over at the bank? He is the mayor, you know. I know Big Justin may be back of all these crimes, but I can't prove it. You're the mayor of this town, Morse. The people are entitled to some leadership from you. What do you want me to do, Mark? I can't even get a man to accept the job of sheriff. I'm not talking about one man. I mean all of us working together. You mean vigilantes? I couldn't be a part of that. You're scared, Morse. I guess you're right, Mark. Hey, that's my drinking money. see Big Justin. What makes you think he's here? He owns the National, doesn't he? Well, 
He has a sort of an interest in it. But he doesn't spend any time here. Well, tell him Mark Bonham's looking for him. He'll know where to find him. Better slow down, mister. Mighty strong talk for a man without a gun. Do you fellas ever breathe any fresh air? What's that supposed to mean? Yeah. Keep talking, Bonham. Just keep talking. <laughs> I'll settle with Big Justin. Nobody else. You know, Clint, I was just thinking. Bonham don't need a horse that fine. Maybe he won't need a horse at all. Nobody in town has the nerve to stand up and be counted. If we're going to get any help, it'll have to come from outside. Law of any kind seems so far away. I guess the only hope is to get a federal marshal in here. Mark, you will be careful, won't you? You can't do it all alone. I'll be careful. What is it? Sounds like someone at the corral. You stay here. Was a man, a brave man, whose heart was filled with love. Both strength and might were in his hand, though gentle as a dove. He wore no gun upon his hip, his body to protect. His armor was the word of God, and so he stood erect. The persuader, the persuader. And everybody knew the persuader, the persuader. The words he spoke were true. Well, I declare. Well, that must be Matthew Bottom, Mark's twin brother. Toby said he was due any day. For a minute, I thought I was seeing a ghost. I wonder if he knows. The honest folk were losing heart. Still others didn't care. Then came along the man of God to lead them. He would dare. The Persuader. Excuse me. I'm looking for Mark Bonham's place. That's about a mile out of town on the Old Mill River Road. What's the 
trouble. How strange is that unusual around here? You're Mark Bottoms. Oh, Mark's my brother. As a matter of fact, I expected him to meet me at the station. And now it looks like I'll have to rent a horse. I'll get you one. The whole town feared the outlaw's gun. Before him, none would stand. Well, Steve, looks like the good Lord sent him back to bring charges against us. What are you talking about? Well, I'm steady. He... Shut up, you fool. Don't tell the whole town. This is his brother. Fancy preacher from Atlanta. It's been some time since I've been on a horse. Oh, he won't give you no trouble. Man's it all right? Yes, I think so. Hey, much obliged. another man to do what he would not. He'd make his choice, then take his stand, no matter what his lot. If this man had to stand alone, the way he'd surely miss. But God was always by his side for such a time as this. The persuader, the persuader, and everybody knew the persuader, the persuader. The words he spoke were true. Matt. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Suffering is endurable, if it doesn't have to be borne alone. And today our Lord stands ready to comfort all who will put their trust in him. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. There isn't much I can say to you about my brother's life that you don't know already. Surely he was an example to all of us. But I would like to say a few words to you about his death. I think I know the way most of you are feeling. Full of hate, anger, a desire for revenge. And I can't say that I blame you for feeling that way. From what I hear, the devil has really been in the saddle around these parts. And decent folk don't feel safe when they walk down the street. But the question is, what are we going to do about it? Well, let me say to you what I would say to my brother if he were alive today. We're not going to unseat the devil by hating him. Because hate is one of the devil's tools. The trouble in Kenogi is more than just a band of lawless men. Part of it is in here, inside of us. We don't like to admit that we need God in our scheme of things. doing here? Why, if... Aren't you one of Justin's men? No. Well, that is... Well, I... are you or aren't you? Well, I work at the National, but that doesn't make me one of Justin's men. Doesn't it? Look, your dad came into the bar the day it was... Well, there was something about him. Something I never see in the crowd at the bar. And I... Well, I'm sorry about what's happened. I'd like to pay my respects. What's your name? Williams. They call me Willie.
You're, you're not making sense, Uncle Matt. It takes more than a prayer to stop a man like Beck Justin. Toby, a town that wants law and order has to start by making itself strong inside. You don't do that by forming a posse or appointing a sheriff. In order to change a town, you have to change the people in it. And that takes a power that you and I don't have. Power. This is all the power I need. I know this is hard for you to understand right now. This is a battle that can't be won with a gun. I'm sick of just sitting around while Vic Justin and his men kill and rob and run this town to suit themselves. But you can't right those wrongs by committing others. Toby, God doesn't settle his accounts in a day. You better turn in, Uncle Matt. Tell me about the church, Dan. Oh, nothing much to tell, Reverend. Burned down the night before we were to hold the first meeting. How did that happen? Well, it, it was all kind of mysterious. Burned down in the middle of the night. Preacher got real discouraged and left town the next day. I see. I guess it'll be all right. Property does belong to the bank. We have no use for it just now. Of course, if you do rebuild the church, there is a possibility it might burn down again. I'll risk it. Do you really think that building a church is going to make a difference around here? Bringing people to God will make a difference. It always has. It takes a mighty powerful man to swing a hammer like that. Man gets used to it after a while. How'd you like to put some of those muscles to work? For God. How's that? I'm gonna do some construction work. On a new church. I could use some help. Ain't that likely to get a little risky? That's why I need your help. You don't look like a man would scare easy. Reverend, I... I never amount to much preaching a sermon, but I... I reckon I could pound a few nails for you. The persuader, the persuader, and everybody knew. I found this little fellow down the livery stable. I think he needs someone to take care of him. Would you like the job? Quite a spell since I've seen them smile like that. Thank you. Grief isn't becoming to young ones, Mrs. Landis. It isn't becoming to grown ups either. What I came to see you about was that lumber. I can't pay much for it, but I can put it to a good use. Oh? I want to rebuild the church. You may have the lumber, Reverend Bonham. Just call it a contribution from my husband to help unseat the devil. I wish you'd seen those Landis girls when they saw that kitten. I wish Nell's need could be met that simply. Well, I think her giving us the lumber is a good beginning, Catherine. That's what I'm hoping building a church will mean to a lot of people. Give them something tangible to do. Excuse me. Excuse me. You stay in the house, Paul. Why? Because I want you to, that's why. And please don't argue. All right.
I just don't like them being out after dark. Why did I give you a whip and walk in on me like that? Uh, I just wanted to know what the gun was for. Paul, how would you like to play a, a sort of a game? Like Duck on the Rock. You want to? Good. Now, now here's the way we'll play it. You sit right here on the bed and, uh... You always want to use my knife to make a whistle. Well, here's your chance. This is a good game. Be careful, don't cut your fingers. Now, all you have to do is notch the bark and loosen it, like I showed you before. My part of the game is to slip through the window without anybody seeing me. Like an Indian scout, understand? And the most important thing is for you to be very quiet uh, until Ma or Uncle Matt come to get you. Paul? He's with me, Ma. I'm teaching him how to make a whistle. Oh, all right. It's his bedtime in half an hour. Where are you going? Oh, that's a secret, Paul. You don't want me to ruin the game. Well, you're coming back, aren't you? Oh, sure, sure. All good Indian scouts come back. You know that. Claudia brings you in here. Don't get excited. I won't stay a minute. Here, hold this. Don't drink it. We'll eat your insides out. Willie, I'm looking for Pip Justin. You're a bigger fool than I thought. Don't you preach to me. Just tell me where I'll find him and I'll get out of here. Your pleasure, Mr. Bonham. Oh, it's just a visit, ma'am. You haven't touched your drink. That's not very sociable. Sorry, I haven't got time to talk, ma'am. Good night.
told me. I knew this moment would come. Ever since the funeral. I gotta find the man who killed my father. There just isn't any other way. Somebody's gotta stop Big Justin. But you're no match for his hired gun. Why, you wouldn't stand a chance. Besides, you don't even know where to find him. I know her. I got another woman. Toby, don't take the law into your own hands. What law? Nobody around here is willing to stand up for any law. Well, it, it may take time, but they will. People like your Uncle Matt will see to it. And while he's building a church, how many more men will die? Toby. Toby, I love you. I love you. Please don't do this. Please. Cora, this is something I've got to do. Go get ready for bed, Paul. I'll come in a minute. It was only a game. Afraid he'd try something like this. Well, isn't there something we can do? Of course there is. I'll go after him right away. Why, Cora? Excuse me for coming out at this hour, Reverend Bonham, but. Oh, Mrs. Bonham. You know about. Toby. Have you seen him, Cora? He stopped by the store about an hour ago. I tried to talk him out of it. He'd set his mind on going after Justin. I didn't know what to do. Dad was out. I came as soon as I could. Of course you did, dear. Cora, how would he know where to find Justin? He has a ranch somewhere north of here. Toby found out how to get there from the bartender at the National. The one called Willie. They wouldn't hurt him, would they? I mean, well, it's not like he's a real gunman. No, Cora. He's not a real gunman. Matt. What are you going to do? You can't ride alone. You don't know the countryside. Well, the first thing to do is to talk to Willie. Find out what he really told the boy. Why don't you have Cora spend the night with you? I'll get word to Dan. Matt, I... Well, all I can do is beg you to be careful like I did with Mark and Toby. You know there's something else you can do, Catherine. I'll pray, Matt. I'll pray.
Evening, Reverend. I guess you know why I'm here, Willie. Well, let's go to my room where we can talk. We haven't time to talk. All right, Reverend. But it'd be suicide to leave before morning. That will be all for the evening, Pete. You may turn in. Buenas noches, senor. Good night. Don't move, Justin. Bottom, isn't it? Just be glad I'm not like you, or I'd have plugged in the back before now. Uh, judging from the sound in the kitchen, you've already seen Pete. Just stay right where you are. Now, why don't you put that thing down so we can talk sociable like? Justin, I'm not putting that. Down. <laughs> will do you some good. I don't want it. Well, what do you want? All I want is to find the man who killed my father. And you think I did it? You don't understand what's going on in this territory. Your father wasn't murdered. Mark Bonham was on the wrong side. He was on the side of law. Who's law? It's the law of survival. That's the law that gives a man a chance to live. <laughs> Most men are like sheep. They band together, not because they trust each other, but it's safer that way. They don't have the courage to stand up and take what they want. What are you trying to say? I'm telling you not to run with the sheep. Feed on them, fatten on them. That's what they're here for. You know, I like your nerve, boy. Here. I might not miss the next time. Did you see me kill your father? Did anyone see me kill him? So you come here gunning for me without any proof that I'm your man. Pete, you know me better than that. What do you want I should do with the one in the storeroom? The boy could prove quite useful. The son of the late Mark Bonham riding with Big Justin. <laughs> that should set Kenogi back on its heels. Yeah, I think I'll keep our guest around for a while. He does not feel very welcome in the storeroom. 
Well, the preacher coming in over the North Range. Who's with him? Nobody. He's alone. He's going to get the boy. Huh? Oh, Toby Bonham dropped in on us last night. We made him feel at home in the storeroom. It's possible he might stay with us for a while. I don't get it. Nobody asked you to. Hey, Pete. Bring in the boy. I want to talk to him alone. Uh, Clint, wait. Let's give the preacher a real cordial reception. And tell Steve to lay off like it out there. Get him some breakfast. Well, I don't guess I should expect any thanks for my hospitality. Your coming out here last night must have upset your kinfolks. Your uncle's here to see you safely home. Uncle Matt? Here? Yeah. I guess they don't think you're dry behind the ears as yet. And you came out here to do a man's job. Why don't you tell your uncle you're going to stick around for a few days to look this over? You'll be free to go anytime you want to. But when you ride out, it'll be as a man, without anybody to nursemaid you. Why are you doing this? You've got nerve, Toby. And I don't think you should be close herded like a young calf. Think it over. I'll go and talk to your uncle. Stop right there, mister. Well, is this what is known as a pastoral call, preacher? So you're Big Chester. It's quite an occasion having a visitor not wearing guns, isn't it, boys? I understand my nephew might be here. He might be. What do you want with him? I'll tell that to him if you don't. Toby, come on out. You've got company. I came to take you home, Toby. I wish you hadn't have come, Uncle Matt. You mean you want to stay here? It's not that you... There's some things I want to find out. Toby, don't you realize you're playing with fire? You don't have to worry about that. Then what will I tell your mother? Cora. I'm not a kid anymore, Uncle Matt. I tell you, there's some things I want to find out. I gotta find them out in my own way. Anything else you came for, preacher? The boys and me like to oblige when we can. Justin, I'm holding you personally responsible for the safety of that boy. Mighty big talk from a tenderfoot. Let me warn you, all of you. I personally am going to see to it that the people of this territory fight you and everything you stand for. <laughs> to think he's not welcome in these parts. 
Nothing like a good right cross to the jaw to back up a sermon, eh, preacher? Yeah. That's the language you understand, isn't it? If I could just figure out what they planned for the boy. Oh, I have a feeling the boy would be all right, Reverend. Besides, the whole town knows he's out there, and Justin is too smart to try anything. It's been awfully hard for Catherine. Well, we ought to get the framework up in about a week. Say, what about the windows? I ordered some plate glass from Chicago. Now it just gets here in time. We're going to need some help, Reverend. It's going to take a lot of folks working up a sweat to finish this job. They'll come, Cleary. They'll come. I had to see for myself. Willie! You could ruin everything coming out here. I had to see if you were a bigger fool as the town saying. Mark Barnum's son living with Vic Justin. Well, I knew they'd be taught. But I don't see any of them buck him either. Now listen, Willie, nobody's ever been able to prove anything against Justin, right? But I'm on the inside now where I've got a chance to do something about it. And I'm not leaving here until I get some kind of proof that'll stop him for good. Some people are easy to fool. I've been doing it all my life. In bars all the way from Flatbush to Frisco. But I've never known anyone to fool Vic Justin. He knows what you're after, and he'll make sure you don't find out anything that'll stand against him. Sooner or later, something's going to slip, and when it does, I want to be here. All right, Toby. But just remember this. Once you start riding with them, there'll be no turning back. I can take care of myself. I wonder. <laughs> This way now. There, that's it. Fine. Well, this is where the 
Really important things you said, Cleary. I pray I'll be worthy of it. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Reverend. It sure looks nice. I'm glad I had a part in building it. I couldn't have done it without you. I never thought a man could feel this way about a church. I mean, a man from a livery stable. Don't ever apologize for working with your hands, Cleary. Remember the 12 disciples of our Lord? They were fishermen, mostly. But a man's trade didn't matter. Christ always appealed to the real man, the one inside. When he said, follow me, they left their nets and their places of business and followed him. It was a wonderful friendship these men had with their new master. There's something about it that changed their lives. For the first time, they really cared about others. They wanted to help them. They wanted everybody to have what they had discovered. A real purpose to live. An inner peace and joy. And one day, their friend left them. They were a little slow to understand it all. His death on a cross his resurrection, and finally his last farewell. For a while they were stunned by their loss, but then they made a wonderful discovery. They found that this new power to change lives hadn't left with their Lord. One could still become a friend of Christ by trusting him as Savior and Lord. And so it's remained right down to the present day. I've experienced it in my own life, Cleary. And that's what I want for the town of Canopy. Well, what you're saying, Reverend, sure makes sense. If the spirit of the living Christ could walk these streets in the hearts of these people, you want it to start with you, Cleary? Yes, I do. Sure do. trying to do? Wake up the town? I couldn't help it. All right. It's all the stuff. Head out. You'll burn up the whole town! You hurt bad, Willie? I'll be all right. Get a bucket for Gabe going. I'm all right. I'll get a doctor. The nearest one's Doc Smith at Cross Creek. I can make an hour on a fresh horse. You stay here with him, Cora. I'll move him to the store as soon as the fire is under control. Miss Cora. 
tonight. I I said a trick I've been working on for <coughs> such a long time. Stop the boy's cold. Here, I'll show you. Never mind, Willie. Not now. Guess I need a little more practice. Please, Willie, don't talk. Save your strength. That isn't every night I, I have a beautiful girl for company. Of course, that's the way it's always been with me. Please, Willie. I just never quite caught up with the crowd. Toby. Toby, wait. I just wanted to stop him. He doesn't belong. Willie. Willie. Was Toby riding with... <coughs> Canoga needs a church, Reverend. Oh, there's so many things I want to do. Toby's a fool. I tried to stop him. I, I tried to tell him, but... But there's no time. Toby. Toby, wait. Don't come any closer. All right, Cora, if that's the way you want it. What am I supposed to do? I've just watched a man die. A man you and your new friends shot down in cold blood. That's why I came back. I swear to you, I had nothing to do with the shooting. You were one of them, weren't you? Willie came dashing out in front of our horses. The light was bad. I guess Clint thought he was pulling his gun. He died with your name on his lips, Toby. But I, I, I tell you, I didn't have... He said all he wanted to do was to talk to you. What do you suppose he wanted to say, Toby? I don't know. That you'd made a bad choice, maybe? Riding with the same gang that killed your own father? Oh, I just want to find the man who killed my father. That's what you say. Remember, Toby? Well, I'm glad your father's not here to see you a part of the thing he hated most. Oh, that would have killed him just as quick as any of Justin's bullets. Cora, I'm not here to make any excuses for myself. I know I went out to Justin's to get Dad's killer. And I stayed. But believe me, it hasn't been a waste of time. I guess it looks like I've become a lot of things. I'm not a killer. I'm as sorry about Willie as you are. Sorry enough to go out there on the street and tell the rest of the town. Oh, he's about as welcome as Justin himself tonight. It's a high price, isn't it? Crossing over to the other side. Willie found that out. Just what is it you want me to do, Matt? I want you to send a delegation to the legislature. 
demand that they take some action. Send in troops. Who would lead the delegation? I will. Matt, don't you know what that could mean? Somebody has to take the lead, and I'm willing to do it, that's all. Your brother came to me with ideas like that one day. That night he was murdered. We're in a battle for what's right, Morse. We can't give up just because we've had losses. I don't know, Matt. I'll have to think it over. The people knew he spoke the truth and that his way was right. With hope and faith rekindled now, they started to unite. The word of God was in his heart to teach it, he must try and show his people how to live and even how to die. The persuader, the persuader, and everybody knew. The persuader, the persuader, the words he spoke were true. meeting in our new church. We hadn't planned to open for at least another week, but certain events of the last days changed those plans. And so we meet here today to dedicate this place as a house of worship. I think what we'll remember most about this church is that we built it together. Remember, Dan? The day we stood on the ruins of the old side church and talked about the new building. Cleary, you were the first to come and help us build. And then there was Catherine and Cora and Nell Landis with gallons of coffee and the children to tidy up and keep us supplied with mail. Every day, more of you joined in, fearfully at first, but as you worked, confidence came. You nailed your fears to the timbers, discovering the blessings of God as you labored for them. Now, I want to ask you, is building a town so different from building a church? Isn't it possible that working together the same way, God would help us to build a community that is strong and decent where there's no room for fear, no room for lawlessness or violence. I want to warn you, to build a town like that will cost us something. It will take more courage than it took to come here and build this church. You'll remember when I first came to Kenogi, I told you that part of the trouble was inside, here. Some of you have not yet faced the fact that you need a savior. Sorry to be late, folks. Me and the boys had some business to tend to along the way. Go right ahead with your preaching. I'm mighty interested in what you've got to say. <laughs> I was talking about building a town where there was no room for lawlessness and violence and the price we'd have to pay to get it. 
I was about to say that sometimes it takes more courage to live than it does to die. It's never easy to stand up for what's right. But down through human history, whenever men have obeyed God and followed his commandments, they've won the battle. And that's true here today in our town. A time has come to raise up a standard against evil men who prey on the innocent. Doesn't sound like a sermon to me. Right, pretty little church you got here. It'd be a shame if it was to burn down. All right, folks, the meeting's over. I'll give you two minutes to clear out. God's out there, too. You're dismissed. Hey, Reverend, I've got a gun in my saddlebag. If I could do no clear. That'd be playing right into their hands. get a little warm over there. You better stand clear. You can destroy the church, Judson. You can't destroy what it stands for. Better men than you tried that 1,900 years ago. Those are mighty big words, Reverend. Let's just see how true they are. Wait. Ah, preacher. You've had your say. Not quite. This is more than a building we're fighting for. This is a whole way of life. You've held the reins on this town a long time, Judson. The people want an end to that. Yes. They want to be able to sleep at night. They want to be able to walk down the streets without fear. And they're willing to pay the price to get what they want. We're standing with you, Reverend. Stop right there, folks, or somebody's going to get hurt. Just say when, boss. We'll finish this off in a hurry. Victory is won at the point of a gun, aren't very permanent. That all depends on who's holding the gun. That's the story of your life, isn't it? Sure, you can kill me. You can kill a lot of us if you shoot fast enough. But you can't kill off a whole town, Justin. <laughs> Next time I'll be aiming higher. Looks like we don't scare anymore. That's a greater load than a six gun. We're through running, Justin. All right, mister. I said, get the horses. The words he spoke were true. You know, preacher, I've always wondered just how right you are. Services will continue inside, folks. Hello, Toby. Welcome back.
thanks, Uncle Matt. There's so many things I want to say. There'll be plenty of time for that. Are you sure you can manage, Catherine? Oh, I think so. Cora and I'll dress his arm at the store. Oh, Matt, this is one day none of us will soon forget. Mark would have been so proud to have seen it. You go right ahead with the service, Reverend. We'll take good care of the boy. All right, Dan. Thank you. Your congregation is waiting, Reverend. You know, Cleary, we're seeing the beginning of a whole new day. It won't be long before the face of the land will change. Someday, great cities will rise out of the plain. Yet with all his progress and achievement, man will still need God, just as we needed him today. Thank you.